and thanks Emma very much for the um, for the introduction for the um, third hour. So up to now, what we did again, let's let's wrap it up. Um, we talked about the Agris in general terms in the first hour and in the last hour in the second uh, session. We told you uh, about why you should become a, a, a data provider and how we work with your country hubs. Uh, but if you have the question now, so what? So how are we going to actually become a data provider? And uh, what are these things in, in a real life examples? Can you show us some? So this should be the hour that we should be talking about those. Again, let's remind ourselves, our data providers are the organizations. They make uh, their um, they make available they make available their collections of scientific literature or uh, research outputs, any other research outputs, and the data sets to their digital libraries, uh, their library catalogs. It could be their institutional repositories or a journal. They can apply for a registration um, as a data provider in be to, to be actually in the uh, Agris network. Perhaps maybe I should also just uh, say a few things about, especially just because we had many questions about country hubs, being a country hub, being getting volunteer and everything, there was a question about that too. Um, our country hubs are already data providers. So the, the first step is actually becoming a data provider and being in the network, obviously. So I will try to give you a glimpse of how to become a data provider now, step by step. Um, it's not really a, a complicated, process itself. I mean, at least in your end, if you are interested as an organization wishing to become a data provider, you just need to fill a form and submit that. Um, my colleagues or um, may actually share the link with you um, while I'm speaking in the chat box or later I can uh, put that in the chat box. Um, there is a there is a registration form. This is this form actually is a little bit detailed so that we can get all the information about the description of the organizations, what type of resources actually you want us to index in our grids, that sort of, you know, quite detailed uh, form, but that really helps us, you know, uh, to start a proper um, collaboration with you, with your organization. And the registrations after we receive this um, in two, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even take, you know, two working days, but uh, within two working days, these registrations and applications are confirmed. And we have a review process. And this uh, review process is um, 10 working days. Within 10 working days, our applicants, uh, based on the inclusion uh, criteria, uh, they should be hearing from us um, about their acceptance or if that's the case in, in rejection. Perhaps I should just pause here to talk about um, that we, we had a period, you know, we actually have suspended getting new, um, new data providers within the network. And that is about uh, our last six months or eight months at most. What we did was, as we explained before, um, Agris and, um, and Agris the data, sorry, uh, data registry, data provider registry have been going through a lot of changes, a lot of improvements. There has been significant um, improvements on the visibility of the data um, providers. Plus, we did spend a lot of um, time and our best efforts to reactivate and re-engage with our um, data providers within that period. So that's why we said we got back to our applicants and said, you will be hearing from us you know, from July because uh, it has been suspended just temporarily. That's why uh, you also saw uh, we have now around, you know, 53 waiting uh, applicants, and we will be actually in touch with you very, very soon if you are in the audience. Upon the acceptance uh, of these uh, applications, we create a public profile for these organizations. And this organization profile, the public, um, uh, public face is also um, created and you can actually see them in the data provider registry. When I say data provider registry, what it means is that um, if you go to the Agris portal again, under the Agris network, you can actually see this, this registry. This is basically a list, a directory of the data providers, organizations, which contribute the content to the Agris with their resources. As I mentioned before, uh, this registry has been improved significantly in the, in the past months. It, it was always there. 
and we always uh, were, was, were able to um, just go by the country and find the data provider. But uh, at the moment, there is also a there's also a search screen. So there's a gl glimpse, you know, screenshot here. You can actually see who is uh, who are the data providers in your country, and uh, you can also search them by their name. You also see here at the country code and the center code. This ARN means the Agris ID. Every Agris data provider is given a unique ID. That makes all the link to the registry. And also in the Agris database, they, you can actually identify your collections with this Agris ID. Plus uh, in, in your records, there's always um, a link to the data provider. Again, this Agris ID makes that possible. This is the link if you like to see the data providers themselves, but um, we'll be sharing those links or you can actually have a look at, uh, at, at the website. I would like to just give you a good example here about data providers profile. This is quite important because we kept saying that we increase visibility of the data providers, we give more visibility to the data providers uh, profile, this organizational profile uh, on the registry. Um, what we mean is that, for instance, you see a good example here from Georgia, uh, our colleagues taking for me, has a description. This is their public view uh, in the end. This um, also shows right under the description, you also see what resources that we are uh, indexing from this institution. And at the bottom of the screen, I am just underlining what kind of related activities they have been involved in the Agris network. As I showed you, you know, in the last hour, there are different news that we share about uh, these different you know, our partners, Agris partners. And for instance, in this one, Tech Informe had an online seminar. They also had this you know, two-day workshop. And all these uh, different activities are also linked to the organizational profile. So we make our best efforts really to show everything uh, as well as you know, uh, the, your digital collections. We also make the effort to show um, these activities you know, uh, taken by or organized different uh, data providers. If you look at the right uh, hand side, these you know, publications you see, uh, our, again, taking for me colleagues uh, translated our user guide to Georgian so this user guide, uh, whatever actually they involved again with the publications are also displayed here. So this is just a one, you know, glimpse of, you know, what the profile, public profile um, can show on the registry. If I go one step further, sorry, I don't know why. Okay, okay, I'm on the right slide. And um, on this one, we also would like to um, just underline something quite new. There's this activity status. If you go to the, uh, any of the data providers uh, profile at the moment or in the Agris database itself, what you see is that the status. Again, if you look at the same example, uh, the tech for me here, it says, uh, I try to underline that it says the active, the status. This is quite important in, in, in different ways. For instance, what I highlighted here, the considering the high usage of Agris worldwide, having up-to-date content in Agris is very critical in terms of providing our end users with the latest and recent publications or data produce these specific uh, partners, Ag Agris partners. Why it is important in a way, it is active or inactive or non-active actually say, because we kept saying that, you know, this is quite a, um, Agris has a long history and some of the you know, data providers are no longer actually exist or for, for some technical reasons it could be or some other human resources you know, uh, due to some human resources restrictions or something. They have not been able to provide uh, any bibliographic rec records to us and they have just suspended their um, collaboration with Agris. That could be the case. So for these different reasons, they could be active or non-active. Uh, but, you know, what we are trying to do is that uh, we want to be able to say this to the end users as well, because when they come and search something in the Argus database, uh, and, that, and if they rely actually in the database content for their research, they need to be able to tell whether they are constantly, regularly updating their content within Argus uh, about these data providers. So, 
I showed you one of the examples on the data profile that you can see the status, but plus in the in the first you know, screenshot here, it's just a snapshot, um, it's just sh showing in the database when you search something, you also see the data providers with this active or inactive note next to the name, name of the uh, data providers. So I really hope or we really hope that this, this function is going to help both our data providers and also the users. Um, while I'm on this, you know, data provider profiles, I really um, just like to make a point of saying, please, if you see anything uh, incorrect or wrong or something to add actually into your profiles, or you want to actually update your in organizational uh, description, for instance, please just get in touch with us because as you see, this is a huge network. We have been going through hundreds uh, of our uh, data providers profiles, but Obviously, um, we may have uh, just you know left some some behind, or we just skipped them or something. But we want to do our best in that department. This is another information. Sorry, this is another important um, aspect of the uh, data providers' um, visibility. Because up to now, we always just underline the visibility of the data providers and organizational profile and et cetera. But uh, Argus also gives the visibility to the data providers collections directly within the Argus database. This uh, so in screenshots that you see from the Argus database, um, if our data providers go into it, go into the Argus database with their uh, login credentials, because this is a login protected um, interface, not for the users, but for the data providers, I'm trying to say that if they log in with their uh, username and password, they are also able to filter the data providers by the country and specifically actually by the data provider. The reason that this is helpful for the data providers is that you can always go and check what is actually in your collection, how many records you have in that collection, and uh, or, and also the permanent link to your uh, digital collection. In this specific example, our uh, colleagues in the National Academy of Science of, uh, Science of Belarus, as I mentioned before, they are also using Argus as an infrastructure to expose their, uh, their collections. And again, in the first session, um, Justin was also talking about some of the, of the data providers and some countries Again, some of the organizations may not have all the possibilities or the facilities to have this, you know, infrastructures themselves. Then as Agris, we are there to help to um, expose their actually research outputs within Agris. And when they need it, they can also get it back to uh, import to somewhere else. Like uh, in the example of um, that we hear from Ikarda from Enrico. In this example, again, one last thing that I want to uh, underline, I'm just changing the uh, place of the uh, uh, photos. If you look at this URL, it uh, finishes with BY0. This is the uh, unique Agris ID that I mentioned in the earlier slides. Every data provider is given this ID. And when you actually filter the data providers, you can actually see this URL. And this is a permanent URL to your collections. What happens is that, for instance, in the Belarus uh, colleagues, they can actually embed or they can link to uh, these specific collections on their website. So rather than using any other uh, infrastructure options. I hope this makes it clear in terms of um, what other benefits that you can actually get from Agris, not just the organizational profiles, but individual uh, digital collections are also quite visible in Agris database. Let's look at the um, little bit of the, the strategy that we are following uh, to develop the content in Agris. Obviously, um, what we said uh, since the beginning, uh, this is very much evolving Agris because it has a long history. And um, at the moment, we are also moving lots of back end processes from manual uh, processes to the automated, automated ways. Um, because now we are dealing with more repositories, a bit more you know, enhanced actually technologies from our data providers. So from focusing on the library information system and the catalogs, we are moving more automated ways to expand our content. 
In terms of content types, things are also changing because there are data providers in the network. We used to get just the library records, but now they have a number of repositories within their organizations. They're also publishing journals. So from one organization, from different departments even, we are actually um, uh, indexing different type of resources. And the very, very latest one is the data sets. We have started indexing data sets in the last years. Um, about the quality, uh, obviously with the quality and the scope of our grids, we try and stay aligned with the um, with the uh, files, you know, uh, interest of areas. The permanent contents is the presence, and despite the fact that some items might be found are that are slightly outside of the scope of our grids, that is also okay. But if you see any of these off-site um, things that you know shouldn't be in in the scope of progress or in the database they're always happy to actually hear from you because yeah this is a this is just an ongoing improvement really we always do about the content um collaborating with the data providers this was something that we wanted to highlight agris always wants to get the um or the, the priority is to get the uh, information and the bibliographic records from the source of uh, the original source of the resource. So rather than expanding our um, collaborative network with other service providers where we can aggregate and where we can actually harvest more from other uh, service providers, we focus on these primary sources, you know, with, with uh, one or two exceptions. But you know, this is this is where we stand. Um, we also wanted to highlight our position with the full text. As Emma explained before, uh, Agris doesn't store the full text. We don't actually store um, the, the records ourselves, but we do, sorry, the full text ourselves. But what we highly and strongly recommend is that when you are contributing to Agris, when you send the bibliographic records, please just include the full text link to your own collections so that the Agris actually, when the Agris users are using the database itself, they can also just visit your site at the end of that, that uh, connection. This looks like a, a quite simple and known uh, list, but I just wanted to underline what type of resources that we are indexing. They are journal articles, we have monographs, we have books, we have book chapters, book parts, we have conference objects, proceedings, posters, papers, and more importantly, gray literature. This is quite important to us. Um, we explained that before. Food and agriculture um, literature doesn't always takes place in the, um, take place in the peer review literature or in the journal article, but they, you can find a lot of very useful, um, important, valuable information in the re reports. Uh, for instance, so thesis, dissertations, uh, working papers with technical reports, so reports, that's why grey literature is quite important. And recently, I already mentioned the data sets that we started indexing. Um, I think I, I, I tried to make this point before, but multilinguality in Agris is, is one of the, again, one of the um, key elements of our both our network and the database itself. So we have large number of languages represented in Agris as a result of indexing bibliographic records in local languages from all over the world. So they don't need to be English, so they can be in any other languages. And uh, this gives us that diversity that I talked about in the um, last hour. And this, yeah, this is this is very, very important, especially where we focus on the global south in terms of expanding the content in um, in Agris. Um, yeah, and the diversity in terms of representation of these languages other than only English is an important value, as I said, and it is strongly endorsed in this scholarly com communication from our expect from our perspective. Using AgroWalk, the AgroWalk multilingual thesaurus, I'm sure this is familiar to most of you, but for those who doesn't know or who doesn't use AgroWalk, it is well recognized, widely used multilingual thesaurus and control vocabulary that makes the infrastructure of Agris uh, more discoverable on the on the web, and uh, that content in, in terms of especially the um, accommodating number of languages. And um, maybe I should also just say, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm in the right place. Um, 
if it comes to the question like how really AgroWalk actually helps the discoverability, AgroWalk um, is a worldwide used and currently actually uh, enables users to work with more than uh, 39,000 uh, different relevant agricultural concepts across 40 languages. What happens is that when you use actually Agri's database, uh, this is just a small example, but if you put uh, rice in your own language, and if this is actually translated in other languages in Agrawok, so Agrawok also catch, you know, the other, um, uh, sorry, rice in other languages, even though you used actually a non-English language when you are actually doing your search. So this, this sort of small touches, but really makes everything accessible and discoverable is uh, quite a key element of the, um, of the, um, of the uh, Agris. Agrawok is also very much recommended to use, to be used in the uh, digital collections and the metadata provided by our data providers in the Agris network. Hope that makes a little bit more sense in terms of discoverability now. Right, so let's say that you know you now have the um, have the bibliography of records. You're already and you're actually in the in the network and you become a data provider and you will you actually want to send the bibliographic records to Agris. What Agris does, um, Agris actually can work in terms of indexing and ingesting data manually and automatically in some automatic automated ways. And this is really based on the capabilities of the data providers information system, the way that they can actually provide the data to us. But we are just happy to uh, have these um, submissions of these bibliographic records to Agris, either via email as just um, metadata, you know, XML files, or they can upload, you know, these uh, files into a service which we are providing in the institutional dashboard for um, data providers. And also they, we can uh, automatically harvest these, um, these metadata with some by using some protocols. I really don't want to go into technical details of this, but um, if you have any question or something, we are happy to follow that up. I'm sorry. Um, yes, and um, I think we, we, we just to reinforce that, you know, data release in Argus happens in, monthly, mainly actually monthly, because new bibliographic records received by email or with the uploads, you know, in the in this you know backend service, uh, they are actually released monthly. But if we actually get any automatically harvested content, they are released quarterly. And um, Argus accept um, new data submissions until the last working day of the month, like this month, and the next um, week of the sorry following following month. Uh, all the new data actually just gets you know released. So this really gives gives us the quite up to date uh, content from our data providers. So we don't really keep them you know for months. We we make a point of these you know release every month. Um, you may also actually have some questions like you know when to send the when to when to send these you know metadata or the bibliographic records to us. I hope this gives you. Um, you know, a broad, you know, some some overview, like you know, how to be part of the part of the network, how you can actually send your bibliographic data, where you are as a data provider and the country hubs. Uh, but after you actually you contribute and send your bibliographic records, this gets you know materialized, obviously, in the Agri database. That's the pearl of you know what we are doing and what we are behind as a community in the end. At that point, I will just um, leave the floor uh, to Emma because. I think she will just give us some, um, or she will take us through some of the elements on the Agris database. Right. So let me, uh, yeah, um, yep, yeah, here. Ex exactly. So now we have been talking a lot, a lot, a lot. To us. This is about two hours and a half about how marvelous it is to be part of the Agris network, how good and beneficial for everybody is to work all together. But we haven't shown uh, exactly what is the, the output of all this collaboration and, and how this is getting materialized in practical terms. So as I said very briefly in my first presentation, uh, we have two URLs. One is fauto.org slash agris, 
which is more for the Agris network. And now I'm going to talk about agris.fao.org is where you can access the Agris database. It's important to remark uh, that Agris is only indexing bibliographic references. We don't store full text because I have seen a couple of um, questions that they were asking us, oh, how can I do to upload data? No, you cannot upload data in Agris. What we can do is to index repositories, information resources like um, if you have a, a repository with articles about the journals that you are publishing, if you're a publisher or if you are a library in a university, so to index the library catalog for all the publications that are being produced in your library. But if you want to give access to the full text in your organization, what we do is we add in this bibliographic reference a link to the full text. And then when a person is interested in accessing this record, they will go to your website. So you would get the statistics, you would get uh, some qualitative and quantitative data about these, um, these successes. I said that, be aware that since probably about a little bit more of a decade, uh, not too many people were publishing a record with full text. Therefore, you might get sometimes frustrated because your access to a record in this record doesn't have access to the full text. Well, this is what happens because uh, this happens because an Agris database, as we have said during the whole afternoon, is pretty um, consolidated, has been there for almost 50 years, and this was not a normal practice some time ago. But what we encourage in the Agris network, and this is a role that the Agris network can play to support the users, is that if yes, there is a, let's say that there is a record that is very interesting, and you think, mm, I would like really to access to this because I feel like I can get very much the type of research that I'm looking for. Well, you could always contact the data provider and ask the data provider, could you please let me know whether I can get a copy of these publication. In some cases, the data provider um, does, if they have the scanned copy or they still have the paper copy. In some cases, you might not find a solution, but it all depends on the, the, the date that this, um, this publication was published. So be aware only about this, and it's an important thing to keep in mind. We receive lots of emails from time to time asking for this kind of stuff. Um, next. So th th this is the interface for Agris search. So you, you see that it's pretty simple. So you can use, uh, you can simply put um, some keywords um, and then you can filter a little bit from the homepage. You can filter by language. You are looking for only, you are looking for uh, research about potatoes, but only in Peru. Um, and therefore you are looking for only in Spanish because uh, you are only read the Spanish, let's say, let's put it like that. Or you want to know what a specific data provider has, um, a specific data providers from a specific country have published about certain type of um, topic. So there we cannot really provide you with a filter by each data provider, but we can do a kind of filter based on the country, the provenance of these data providers. And then you can also filter saying, well, I want to like, I would like to have publications, publications and data sets, only data sets, depending a little bit of what you are looking for. Next. So this is a simple search. This is what I was, uh, I was mentioning is a little bit more specified here. It's uh, the only thing that I would like to add to this, uh, to the previous slide, is that you can also search Agris in the SFAO uh, official languages. As you will know from today and for the interpretation, there are six. You can search in English, Spanish, French, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. So if you speak any of these languages, you will feel much more comfortable if you um, use a specific language that you would like. Next. 
when you have uh, at uh, a keyword and you have click on the icon and uh, the system starts running, uh, gives you some results. And this is the page that you get after after the simple search. This is um, a page where you can get up to 10 results per page. Uh, usually it gives you quite a quite a few information, not too many, because then you will, you will see that there is the result, the specific page for that resource. But essentially you can get the title, you can get the authors, the year of publication, a little bit of abstract if there is, subjects. You can also get the name of the data provider that has supplied this information and whether the data provider is active or non-active interrupted means that the organization is still alive. You could contact them if this publication is not full text. And uh, because they are still there, you could contact them in case that you want to get something from them. But then there are also what we call non-active um, obsolete. I think it's obsolete. I, uh, I want to make sure. Is uh, essentially uh, means that this, this organization, we cannot assure that this is still active. And most probably you might have problems to find any website in referring to that data provider on the web. Next. And this is the very busy bibliographic record page. Um, you can get as much information as we have about the bibliographic record. We don't have anything more than that. So you can first see on the top of the page who provided the, the bibliographic record. So in this case is um, Sirat from France. Is it still active? Um, they are providing data to us uh, every year and probably one, more than once. And then you can see that this is a journal article, the title, the year uh, that was published, abstract, uh, what specific journal was published, um, some more bibliographic information that could be of your interest, the aggregate keywords that would help you as well to filter a little bit into navigate if you love browse through the website if you feel like you would like to get more information about uh, crop ex extensification. I have problems to read that. And uh, on the right, you have, for instance, translate with Google if you like to translate it. Uh, um, <clears throat> the information about the bibliographic record. You can also access the full text. And here you can access either the text that the full text is available in the repository of CRAT. But if, for instance, this link wouldn't exist, you could always try to look up at Google Scholar whether somebody else has this uh, document somewhere else. Therefore, we give you the, the both chances. So it seems like a duplication, but in practical terms, it's not a duplication. Then you could also save the bibliographic record. And you have three different metadata formats to do that. And this is it. This is the bibliographic record. Very simple, very focused on providing as much visibility to the data provider as possible. Uh, we are only facilitating. All the work is done by you. Uh, the research is done by your organization. So we are simply making possible that this record is more findable and visible on the web. Uh, next. And what is what we are planning to do in terms of um, improvements? Uh, well, we would like to improve search functionalities. Of course, this is always something that all the search engines would like to do. What can we do best uh, to make easier the life of our users? We'd also would like to get more um, quality in the bibliographic records, because sometimes it's not that we are incapable and we cannot do, or we cannot set up better functionalities. It's simply that the metadata that we are getting is not rich enough to help us to do other type of filters or other type of um, um, features in, on the website to, to make it um, more interesting in a way. So this is something that we need to, to work on. And I, as I said before, I like very much that some of our colleagues today attending this conference mentioned this, this element of quality. 
uh, also better usability always, more visibility and better connection with Agravoc. And we want to know from you what can we do better. So this is always, I mean, those that know us now since we took Agravoc, they know that we are listening very carefully to what we, what you are saying. So don't feel like we are not going to listen. We always listen and just let us know. Or just come to the next annual meeting and tell us a little bit more about what you think about Agris. And said that, and moving to the next uh, slides, I'm very pleased to welcome our last two guest speakers. Um, I would suggest um, that um, they start uh, turning on their webcams and their mics, but in the meantime, I would like to welcome Lydia Piromova. She is the deputy director for science and at the Central Scientific Agricultural Library in the Russian Federation. And Onan Nulumba is the he's the head of agricultural libraries at Makarere University, Uganda. So yes, so yes, so I see that Onan is already there. Um, and Lydia, uh, I also put you in. Я подключилась, но, к сожалению, видео не видно, поскольку вы меня еще не, не включили. У меня написано, что организатор I, I не включил yeah. видеокамеру. Yeah. Да, спасибо. Yeah, I have sent. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I would suggest that we start uh, with Lydia. Lydia has a very interesting uh, um, speaking notes for, for this session no, today. Mm -hmm. And then we will move more forward to Onan, and who is going to be our last guest speaker. So thank you to both of you. Lydia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Я рада приветствовать организаторов и участников нашей замечательной конференции. Как вы поняли, я представляю Центральную научно-сельскохозяйственную библиотеку, которая работает с Агри с 2007 года. Мы высоко ценим возможности, которые дает нам Агрис, поскольку благодаря Агрис результаты научных исследований, проведенные в России, становятся достоянием международного научного сообщества. И мы интегрируем информацию о научных российских публикациях в мировое информационное пространство. История Агрис, в истории Агрис бывали разные периоды, от активных действий и активного развития до вялотекущего существования. Однако последние 2-3 года мы можем констатировать заметную активность команды Агрис, которая выражается как в проведении различных мероприятий, так и в постоянной обратной связи с участниками сообщества Агрис. Но главное, в работе, направленной на содержательное улучшение контента базы данных Агрис, развитие ее пользовательских сервисов и расширение поисковых возможностей. Два года назад на конференции в Москве были отмечены некоторые технические и технологические недостатки в работе базы данных, которые приводили к потерям информации и значительным задержкам с публикацией документов в базе данных. Сегодня мы наконец сможем говорить об отлаженной работе базы данных и бесперебойной работе по пополнению базы данных. Это не может не радовать. Реализуются также высказанные предложения о необходимости создания комплекса методических пособий по Агрис, а также пожелания получения различного рода статистики по предоставлению документов в базе данных и по работе центров. Сегодня мы это слышали в презентации наших организаторов. Это действительно очень удобно и хорошо. Спасибо вам большое. Следует отметить активную работу команды Агрис по проведению различного рода вебинаров. И весь комплекс мероприятий, проведенных за последние годы, говорят об интенсивном развитии Агрис. Мы констатируем также, что сегодня Агрис – это крупнейшая отраслевая база данных по сельскому хозяйству, отражающая документы по результатам научных исследований и разработок. То есть база данных является прекрасным средством передачи, распространения и обмена знаниями по научным исследованиям, новым технологиям и технологическим разработкам в области сельского хозяйства. Ее несомненное преимущество в бесплатном свободном доступе к информации. 
Увеличение ежегодного количества ссылок на полный текст также является еще одним преимуществом в сравнении с реферативными отраслевыми базами данных, платными по сельскому хозяйству, например, и с реферативными платными мультидисциплинарными базами данных. Корпоративные создания базы данных страны члены ФАМИ, ФАО обеспечивают полноту отражения национальных документных потоков по проблематике сельского хозяйства, что крайне важно для получения представления о состоянии сельского хозяйства в мире и в отдельной стране. Безусловным преимуществом и достоинством Магресом является средства идентификационного и тематического поиска, которые мы можем говорить уверенно в базе данных Агрис очень хорошие. Благодаря как раз развивающимся, особенно в последние годы, Тезаурсу Агровок. Ну, мы на конференции в 2019 году представили целый список наших ожиданий. Надо сказать, что они в большей степени уже на сегодняшний день не реализованы, и это не может не радовать. Однако мы по-прежнему считаем, что крайне важно, чтобы в Агресс всегда включалась актуальная, достоверная, проверенная и обработанная структурированная информация. Формат представления информации соответствовал современному уровню развития коммуникационных сетей. Объективно отражались результаты научных исследований в области АПК в разных странах мира. Развивался и совершенствовался международный тезаурус для обеспечения эффективного тематического поиска. Увеличилось количество ссылок на полные тексты документов. Совершенствовались и развивались пользовательские сервисы. На самом деле то, что я сейчас говорила, мы уже э, услышали сегодня в презентации наших организаторов. И это опять же не может не радовать. Важно, что сегодня база данных Агресс является объединяющим инструментом сотрудничества национальных центров Агресс, создавая так называемое сообщество Агресс. Это замечательно, потому что мы стали больше и регулярно общаться, обмениваться знаниями, новостями и технологиями. Пандемия внесла свои коррективы в работу национального центра Агресс в России, так же, как и во все другие страны и национальные центры, я думаю. Однако нам удалось сохранить объем и темп нашей работы. Более того, продолжаем мы постепенно и наращивать наши объемы. Как большинство учреждений, мы совмещаем дистанционную работу с работой по возможности в офисе. И благодаря средствам коммуникации мы проводим и участвуем в различных вебинарах, конференциях, в том числе и проводим их ФАО. Ну, еще хотелось бы сказать, что ЦНСКБ является не только поставщиком данных, но и популяризатором АГРИС в России. Мы регулярно готовим и публикуем статьи о, в российских журналах о возможностях и роли АГРИС в продвижении результатов научных исследований. Мы разъясняем нашим издателям и журналам требования Агрес и отвечаем на их многочисленные вопросы. И совместно работаем над улучшением поставляемых в Агрес метаданных. Вот по поводу улучшения метаданных, да, я разделяю заботу, так сказать, наших организаторов. Это тоже является, мне кажется, очень важной проблемой. И здесь, на наш взгляд, есть две возможности улучшения качества поставляемых метаданных. Ну, во-первых, нужно то, что касается качества рефератов и тех метаданных, которые публикуются в журналах. Это, безусловно, забота издателей, и они над этим работают, и мы им чем можем в этом помогаем. А то, что касается отбора ключевых слов, отбора терминов из тезауруса, ну, тезаурус не самая простая система, и поэтому здесь лучше, нам кажется, работать все-таки информационным работникам в национальных центрах, которые, собственно, работают, потому что, собственно, от этой очень важной работы зависит эффективность тематического поиска и его релевантность. Поэтому здесь уже это ответственность, как нам кажется, в национальных центрах. Мы надеемся, что агресс и дальше будет развиваться, и агресс сообщество будет расти и увеличиваться. Спасибо за внимание. У меня все. Uh, unfortunately, we might need to hurry up a little bit uh, because uh, 
interpreters are ending uh, their time in 10 minutes. Thank you, Lydia. It was very, very good to hear such a good words after Moscow <laughs> in 2018. So I really appreciate. Um, I'm pretty sure that we will have the, uh, the occasion to meet again very soon and to speak um, more about Agris. Um, I would like to welcome Onan Mulumba. Onan, the floor is all yours. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ima. And um, thank you very much, the entire team, organizing team for this event. I'm very happy to have been one of the speakers of this event, but most especially, I'm so happy that um, uh, my talk is going to crown this event. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm just going to speak about uh, basically uh, agris and how it is contributing or supporting uh, research, especially in, in Makere University and perhaps in some other institutions around us. To give you a brief background about uh, Makere University, it was established in 1922 as a technical school. And Makere University is one of the oldest universities in East Africa and perhaps in Africa. When I say 1922, it means that by 2022, which is just next year, Macquarie University will be celebrating 100 years, which makes that a remarkable uh, kind of uh, achievement in terms of existence. And also, Macquarie University is regarded as one of the most prestigi uh, prestigious English uh, universities in Africa. It is worth noting that Macquarie University's core activities include teaching, research and innovations, and community engagement. But I also need to talk about uh, how Macquarie is benefiting from agris. Agricultural research at Macquarie University for long has been premised on both physical and electronic information resources. However, with the current COVID-19 pandemic, there is need for an almost 100% electronic information support. So FAO, FAO's information resources such as Agora and Agris are among the key electronic sources of information which the university has been depending on and continues to depend on. Agris directly supports agricultural research at Macquarie University through providing free access to its, uh, to the publications. These including research articles and of course the data sets. Through the Agris network, researchers are able to collaborate with other researchers to accomplish certain research tasks. And thus this enhances the South to South research collaborations as well as the South to North collaborations. I need to speak about some of the key achievements, research achievements and accomplishments at Macquarie University. Of course, we have a multitude of them, but just to highlight a few, we've had recently state-of-the-art solar irrigation pump developed, especially within the College of Agriculture. Again, we've had new soya bean varieties released, we have had a nitrogen biofortified and pelletized commercial uh, grade organic fertilizer. Of course, there are so many uh, research and innovation accomplishments I cannot mention now, but uh, FAO, uh, uh, FAO and uh, the resources, the information resources have supported so much these research accomplishments. But how can Makerere support Agris? I need to highlight uh, some of these. Macquarie University being a member of the Regional Universities Forum, directly contributes to the research content in Agris. Because when you search Agris, you'll find that the forum has contributed quite a number of research uh, articles, which are, uh, which are visible within Agris. Also, there is an opportunity for Makerere research community to publish its research, research data through Agris, of course, following institutional research management policies, which has been some of uh, 
uh, the much uh, bureaucratic kind of processes to over, I mean, to overcome. As a requirement in the current curriculum review, uh, reviews at the university, information literacy should be incorporated in all courses on the online platform. And therefore, AGRIS is presented as one of the key information resources to support agriculture and other science-based programs. Before I finish, I would like to respond uh, to Dr. Chisenga's question number one he raised. Of course, yes, it is true. Most of our institutions internationally have had challenges sustaining those collaborations and partnerships, especially with regard to information management. Many of them have failed to stand the test of time. Some of them have died even before they could mature. But my main concern is we see that AGRIS has taken the initiative to sustain these networks for such a long time. What do we learn from this kind of experience? I think that's something we need to take on as we think of our future partnerships and engagements. I thank you all and I thank FAO for this initiative, but I cannot forget to thank the AGRIS team, of course, under the championship of IMA for such a wonderful resource. Thank you very much.